Next guest is not only an award-winning author, but her hit podcast, How to Feel, is at over 35 million downloads. I can highly recommend it. Interviewing everyone from Greta Thunberg, Craig David, I was in there too. Mm -hmm. um, now, Elizabeth is back with a new book. Now, this is talking about friendship and why we should be saying bye-bye to toxic friends. And she joins me now. This, Elizabeth, really got me thinking so about glad. the people that are in my life and the people that you just kind of, you're friends with them and you don't really think about it. Mm -hmm. And you really, really should. You were saying you got a bit addicted to friendship during the pandemic. I did. Well, actually, it was the pandemic that revealed to me how addicted I was to it. Because like all of us, my diary emptied overnight. Of course. And I realised that I missed my truest friends with this startling acuteness. Like, I missed their physicality, I missed the hugs, yeah. I missed smelling their perfume. But when I looked at my diary, they weren't the ones that I was spending most time with. And it's partly because they're so loving that they weren't placing demands on my time. Exactly. And then my diary filled up with other obligations, other requirements, sort of acquaintanceships I might have made without really meaning to. Mm. And I thought, well, this isn't right. And I need to reevaluate where my desire for friendship has come from. Right. And I need to rebalance my time. And that was really the starting point for Friendaholic about really nurturing those truest friendships that mm. are most important to you. And you're so right. It's the people that we love the most that we know we say, OK, I can cancel that today. Yes. Or I don't need to see them there because they'll understand. Yes. And, and that's true, but we've got to nurture the people that, that we love. Something in your book that really resonated with me is, and I've seen this happening with friends of mine over the years, is when you meet someone, when you meet your partner, mm. um, and you kind of drop your friends. And, yeah. that's, and you're saying, give them as much of your time. 100%. Don't just all of a sudden go away with the love of your life. No. And then dump your pals. The love of your life should accept your pals, really. Totally. And actually, Friendaholic, a large part of it was because I felt that as a society, we'd elevated romantic love and we'd forgotten right. about friendship love, which for me, I don't know about for you, but for me, it's been the most consistent long-term totally. love of my life. Yeah, of course. My friends have seen me through my darkest times. They've been there to celebrate the triumphs. But we don't have the language to express that and mm. nor do we have the social rituals so whereas in romance we have dating periods we have socially sanctioned ceremonies where we can proclaim our love for each other there's nothing like that for friendship That's and it true. sometimes leads to confusion mm. where you think well hang on a second I was being friendly to this person but I didn't really want a full-blown friendship <laughs> right. where I have to call them every day and I feel guilty <laughs> if I don't meet them for lunch right <laughs> right no that's very true and when you find somebody who is draining you mm. and somebody that you you know when the phone goes and you see their name comes up and you think oh no and your heart sinks to your boots but you, you pick up the phone anyway yeah. how do you get out of that it's as difficult yeah. if not more difficult than getting out of a marriage oh I think it, it? yeah I actually think it's definitely more difficult than getting out of a romantic relationship because we don't have the vocabulary exactly. and there's this assumption that to be a quote-unquote good friend you have to be friends for your life right and actually we don't have that assumption about other relationships and so when a friend does seem to be draining you a bit of energy I advocate just checking in with yourself and almost checking the status of your friendship health in the same way that we check our physical and our mental right. health and in terms of breaking up with a friend, it's a very difficult thing to do. But I don't think you can go wrong if you lead with love. Try to remember the good things about that friendship, the wonderful times you might once have had. Right. And lead with love and just say, listen, I love you. I think nothing but the best of you. But I just feel that our lives are on different paths right now. And I'm going to take a pause from our friendship. Right. That's happened to me. And actually, I've been able to accept that. Yeah. Because Were you really hurt, though? Or are you, are just, I mean, uh, it is hurtful. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? It is hurtful, but that doesn't mean that it's wrong. And actually, That's with the true. passing of time, I feel immense fondness and love for those past friendships. Mm. Because just because they've ended and they're no longer an active part of my life does not mean the friendship itself was a failure. Right. It's forever shaped my life like a like a dormant volcano. <laughs> it's forever <laughs> volcano. shaped the landscape. <laughs> but it's just not. You just don't want to go there. Just, no. Yeah. You do don't that. want to be burned that, by the lava. I was interested <laughs> about your husband in that he's a very self-sufficient man. Yes. He doesn't really need pals. No. He it's amazing. He's not, no. He's not like it's not. It's not nothing wrong with him that he's not got pals. I don't mean that. <laughs> but he's just okay with that. And exactly. some people are. Some people are. Yeah, it's very interesting. I wouldn't want anyone watching this to feel that this book isn't for them if they don't have lots and lots of friends. Because I find it very enlightening being married to someone who, as you say, is self-sufficient. Mm. 
<laughs> he's very enlightened in his approach to friendship in that he's very much about quality over quantity. He's already got a really busy, fulfilled life. Right. And therefore, he doesn't need, like I do, to fill the whole of my self-worth <laughs> by just gathering up lots and lots of people. So he has one or two really good friends right. and he puts his efforts into them. But it, it's taught me a lot being married to him. No, I'm sure it has. Do you think there's a... Is there a magic number of how many friends you should have? And, yeah. and I guess as you get older, it gets smaller. Yeah, it's interesting, this. There's an amazing professor at Oxford University called Robin Dunbar, who's done a lot of work on friendship. Mm. And he says that 150 is the number that the human brain can cope with in terms of, like, big events. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah, we're talking, like, weddings, yeah, sure. your Christmas card list. Got you. And it's a number that gets replicated throughout history. It's the average size of a medieval village, which is super oh, interesting. OK. But he also says that we all need to have friendship layers. So in your first layer, you have up to five key relationships. Right. These people you can phone at two in the morning. They're the ones. You don't exactly. phone them, but you know you could. Exactly right. that. Okay. And you really need to have enough time to nurture those relationships. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if you fall in love or you have kids, he says that will generally cost you two of those friendships, mm. which I thought was, was really yeah. interesting because I've been trying all of my life up to this point just to keep all the connections going. But actually, we don't have enough time in the day. And we're doing a disservice to the ones that we really love mm. if we are spreading ourselves too thinly. That's right. No, it's true. It's a fascinating book, Elizabeth. Thank Friend, you. a holy... It's out now, isn't it? Thursday. It's out on the 30th of March, Thursday. Thursday. Yes. It's out on Thursday. <laughs> it really made me think Thank about... You friends, about how we treat our friends um, and about what they mean to us. And, you know, there's nothing like your pals when things are going good, well. I think, a I think a true friend is somebody, when you've done something amazing, they go, yes, and they're not annoyed. They don't feel threatened. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, look, you're best pals with our Jo, with our Joelle. Yes! What is our Jo like as a pal? <laughs> oh, she's amazing. I'm glad she's one that. of those. I know, I, I couldn't really <laughs> say anything else. She's standing over there with a shopping trolley. Um, <laughs> she's amazing because she's one of those people who never makes anyone feel guilty or yeah. obligated. She has generosity of spirit, which for me is Perfect the main pal. thing. Perfect pal. And she's here as well.